The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Now, are we recording? I'll just turn this on as well. Just before we start, isn't it lovely to be here? Really, it's, it's, it's something wonderful and this is a, a special moment that we are sharing. So let's just acknowledge that and pause and realise that this is very special. Sorry, I'm fogging up like mad here. <laughs> I have huge sympathy for all those frontline workers who work in layers and layers of PPE. I find that with my robes on as well, it's awfully warm. <laughs> Just pausing for a moment to acknowledge that we've been absent and that many, many people have had such hardship and pain, bereavement, sickness, and that globally, you know, it's not over. So we're grateful for this moment to share together, and we rejoice in being back in church together, um, which is a wonderful thing. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. We're going in a moment to say together a prayer about opening up our churches, but I want to take a moment to welcome those who are watching online, who haven't been able to join with us here today. You are very welcome and please pray for us as we pray for you. And so we say together. Lord, be with us as we open the doors. Come in with us, go out with us. Do not sleep when we sleep, but watch over us, protect us and keep us safe, our only help and maker. Amen. <clears throat> I have a little reminder beside the hymns, please do not sing. So we, we listen to the music of our first hymn, Thank you very much, Mr. Saxon.
God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give life and peace. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine in our hearts. In our readings today, we hear a little about how we uh, worship and temples and their readings, the Old Testament reading especially, is particularly chosen for the day that we reopen. So we hear about Jacob encountering God. The Old Testament reading, Genesis chapter 28, starting at verse 11. Jacob came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Here ends the reading. Please stand for our psalm. It's psalm... 122, and we say it first about. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones of judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. They pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper for them. Peace be within your walls, and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The 
Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 16. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Do you know, it, it really is such a joy um, to me and I know to many of you to be here today after. I was just looking at the preacher's book. We keep a record, we fill in a log book, if you like, of services. And I was filling in today's date and there's no entry since the 15th of March. So there's been a gap. And in a way, there's been lots of gaps in most of our lives. The gap of loved ones, the gap of social, the gap of school or work. Um, and sometimes in the void, that's where we hear God. You know, there has been time perhaps more time than many of us wanted to pause and to reflect and to consider. And in a funny way, the day, of, the day that the lockdown started and since then, we've all been reassessing our priorities. I'm just going to turn this mic on because I'm aware that you can't see my face. And it's much harder to, to make out what people are saying. But even on the day of lockdown, start, when lockdown started, we began reassessing our priorities. What's the first thing you did? Probably contacting loved ones because the priorities came into focus. Anyway, I'll go back to my text. Today's readings oh. Today's readings are about encountering God. The Old Testament one was about encountering God. And so many of us have been doing that while 
while not in church. And that story of Jacob meeting God, that wasn't in a building, it was in the wilderness. And God has been with us as we've journeyed through our lockdown. And those of you who are watching online, you're not here, but God is very much with you wherever you are. God has not been absent from our lives while we have not been present in our church buildings. Delighted though we are to be here in this beautiful cathedral to celebrate together. God is found in the most unexpected places. Jacob certainly didn't expect to find him in the wilderness in a dream. And he reaches into our human plight day and night, whether we're awake or asleep, whatever we're doing. And when we do discover God's presence, we can say, as Jacob did, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Today's Gospel reading, which is part of the normal Gospel readings and not chosen particularly for this day, it divides into three parts. There's a parable, a little story, a wisdom saying, and a, a teaching. The first part, there's a parable in which people see Jesus is living a good life and John the Baptist who's referred to in the reading as being a bit of a, a killjoy he neither ate nor drank and people gave out about him and then Jesus came and he ate and drank and people gave out about him so it's a bit like you know you can't win wisdom we're told is shown in true acts and deeds. Wisdom here is Sophia, the personification of wisdom found in the Old Testament. In the second part of the reading, Jesus thanks the Father for choosing the simple and uneducated, the infants, over the wise and the intelligent. Christ is the Father's representative. And in the third part of the reading, Jesus invites those who are weary, those with heavy burdens, to find their rest with him. He says, his way is easy, his burden is light. What's his way? To love God and to love one another. It boils down to something not very complex. You know, we've missed this. We've learned an awful lot too. Lessons that will take us a while to process. Oh, I'll just turn off this one. Lessons that will take us a while to process about what, what I said earlier about pausing and breathing, about cherishing and valuing our loved ones, about how much we need to touch, how tactile we are and how much we miss hugging and kissing and touching. Our churches are reopening and we are glad. And this lockdown has left us missing our Sunday services and church meetings and also our social dimension. Not just coffee with buddies, if that's your thing, but also the baptisms, the weddings, and of course the funerals. 
clergy sometimes joke and say these are hatch, match and dispatch occasions. But they're also the moments that draw our community and our family together. They're moments that provide identity and shape. When we go, when you go to a wedding or to a funeral, the attitude we go with makes a world of difference. Do we go as spectators or as participants? Imagine going to a funeral and, and, and only spectating and not sympathising or feeling empathy. None of us could do that. Indeed, our whole new, even our newly developed form of attending from a distance and lining the route offers just that support. All we can do is stand, so let's stand. It's important to offer support. When I was live streaming, it was some attempt to form an online community. And so many people said, oh, we sing the hymns at home. And I loved hearing you saying that because that's all about forming community. Yes, it was hard, but it made us participants, not just spectators. Taking part is how we make meaning, one of the ways in which we make meaning, both as individuals and as a church community. Having a shared story, a shared humanity. And if I stand back and remain detached and a mere observer of someone else. I'm not sharing in their humanity. And if I'm not sharing in someone else's humanity, then I'm not acknowledging that they too are made in the image and likeness of God. When we rejoice and celebrate with people and when we mourn and weep with people we're putting into practice what the whole doctrine of the trinity teaches about being made in the image and likeness of god individually but also as a community christ has invited us to share with him to find our rest in him, to come to him when we're weary and share our burdens. He says his way is easy, his burden is light, and that way is by loving God and loving each other. Our next hymn has wonderful words and we listen to the beautiful tune as in praise it. Hymn 496. <laughs>
Please stand and we will affirm our faith by saying together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We say together the collect of the fourth Sunday after Trinity. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are humble in heart and true security is found in you. We pray for your church. May we offer to all a place of community and encounter with you. We pray for Paul, our bishop, the bishops of the Church of Ireland, the staff of the RCB, and all who have been working towards the day when our churches reopen. We pray for all who have kept worship going online, we pray for all who are here in this place of worship today and in other places of worship. We pray for our online community and for those who are at home. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, some sought to attack and discredit you, whatever you did. We pray for the vindication of truth and justice in the nations of the world. We pray for our new government and our new Taoiseach, for all governments as they have tried to find ways of dealing with this crisis. We thank God for the blessings of wise decision makers and advisors. We pray for all who face the impact of decisions. Give us the strength that we may know and then follow through and do what is right. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we bring before you our local community. We give thanks for those who have kept our communities alive and functioning. We give thanks especially for frontline workers. We give thanks for schools, healthcare workers, community volunteers who have kept in touch with the husband, delivery people, shop workers. We pray for those who have returned to work, for those who wait to return to work and for those whose jobs have gone. 
and are now faced with uncertainty. We come to you with all these things. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you called the weary to come to you. We lay at your feet all our heavy burdens and all who are ill. We pray for those known to us at home and in hospital who are ill. We pray for those who are bereaved. In a moment of quiet, we come before you with our special prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And we remember especially those who have died since we last met together. Loved ones, neighbours, those many who died and weren't able to have funerals as we know them. Jesus said, this is the will of him that sent me. I should lose nothing of all he has given me and I will raise them up at the last day. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new light. Your Son, by dying for us, conquered death and by rising again restored us to eternal life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet our Redeemer and after our life on earth, be reunited with all our brothers and sisters in that place where every tear is wiped away and all things made new through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We say together, Hear us, O merciful Father, as we remember in love those whom we have placed in your hands. Acknowledge, we pray, the sheep of your own fold lambs of your own flock, sinners of your own redeeming. Enfold them in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and in the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us to trust your name, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 As we remember those who have died, we are also glad that we are together. We say together the special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. We come now to listen to another beautiful hymn, hymn 350, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Just a couple of things before our blessing. I've never taken a service wearing a mask before. <laughs> it's quite hard. It's, it's hard for you to know that I'm actually smiling quite a lot of the time. <laughs> but I am because I'm glad to be here and I know that you're glad to be here. And to those of you who are watching, we're glad you're here and you're watching with us. Next week, our services, um, everybody here has a service sheet, but for those who are watching online, the service sheet is in the email that you'll have got yesterday. And included on it is this uh, sort of plan of what services we're going to have for July. And next, next Sunday, our services will be in Cork Bag at 9 o'clock, not 9.15, and Holy Communion in Middleton at 10.30. And the reason that that is pushed back uh, to 9 a.m. is that, uh, according to our new protocols, only the celebrant, that's me, can touch the chalice. So it just takes a little bit longer mm the chalice and pattern to set up. It takes a bit longer to set up. Communion will be in one kind only and we'll be observing all social distance uh, in order that people can receive communion. Of course, no one is obliged to and uh, you can certainly come along and not receive as well. So the service next week will be Holy Communion in Middleton at 10, 10.30. We're back to three services a Sunday after that. Again, uh, on the 19th, we'll be in East Ferry at 9, Middleton at 10.30, and here in Cloyne at 12. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been it's actually been a really special uh, moment for us here in the cathedral and I hope that you share that feeling at home. Let us pray. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. We finish by saying together um, a prayer similar, very similar to the one we said at the beginning. Again, thinking about opening the door. Lord, be with us as we open the doors. Come in with us, go out with us. Do not sleep when we sleep, but watch over us. Protect us and keep us safe our only help and maker. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.